Uh, hello and good afternoon to everyone. Hello to you. Hey, good afternoon. Are we well? Yes, yes, I'm well. Awesome, Kennedy. We are starting shortly. I'm, I'm, I'm just seeing your message. Yes, we are on. We wait for a few more people to log in and then we start. I see we are at 13. How is everyone else? Bernard, I see Brian. Brian has logged in on two devices. Uh, Celestine, Galaxy. Galaxy, remind me your name. Was it Simon? Uh, has born. Hello, 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 hello. hello. Hello? Am I audible enough? Yeah, we can hear you. Awesome. Yeah, yeah, we can hear. Thank you, Bernard and, 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 and Joseph. How, how, are, how, how are you, Purity? I am very, very fine. Uh, I am, I, I am headborn. Galaxy, Steven. Galaxy is Steven. Karibu sana. Steven Gaiti. Oh, yes, Steven Gaiti. Yes. Joroge, who are you? Paulo Kamau. Paul Jeru. Josh, how are you? I'm good, how are you? I'm very, very fine. How come yeah. we never get to see your faces? The team from Amiran. Eh? Can we see some faces so that we, we can we can know who is Stephen Gaiti, eh? has born and we, we are comfortable with yours. <laughs> You're comfortable with mine, but you should also be comfortable with yours. Eh? Has born. Mm -hmm. Tibebu, Tibebu, you're in the in the coastal region, right? If I remember right. Okay, I see we are seventeen of us. Uh, Lilian Ngendo. Nani Sijataja, Mante. Yes. How are you? Good. How is the going? Uko field ama uko umesimama pahali? I can't hear you. Yes, Mante. All the sales people are, are in yeah. class. Ama penye class ina kupati hapo ndo na login. Who are those behind? I can see a few people behind you, Mante. Uh, uh. It's a Biden and Tibabu. Oh, Tibabu and who else? Tibabu. Oh, Tibabu. How yes, yes. Ah, I'm good. I'm nice. I'm nice. Yes, awesome. So uh, I don't okay. know who is able to give us the go ahead with that. I see we are 16 of us. And it's already eight minutes past 2 p.m. <laughs> Paulo, I can see you loud and very clear. Yes, I'm, you? I'm, I'm fine, thank you. Awesome, where are you, uh, where are you logging in from? Uh, Karatina. Karatina? Yes. I've only passed by Karatina on my way to Nanyuki. Yeah. Awesome. Husband as well. How are you? You can see me now. Yes, clearly I can see you. Where are you at? Me kapa kwa pishori. Wapi? Kapa kwa pishori. At I can't hear what you're saying. Asa, asa manu kwa moya. Oh moya, eh? Karibu na karatina, right? 
Awesome, awesome. So I, I think we, we ought to start. Or oh, what do you think? Do we start? Come on, just give me a go ahead and we start. All right, uh, Edward, I see your hand is up. Does that mean we start? You're not greeting me, why not? You're greeting no, me. Even me, most of the months. <laughs> Edward, Sata. Poor Sata. How is they going? We're good. No, we can't see you. Like, I think light is on. The light is oh. behind you. Eh, okay. Much, much better. Eh? I mean, Mpeketoni. Mpeketoni. Mpeketoni is in the coastal region, right? Yes, Lamu County. Oh, Lamu County. Awesome. Thank yes. you for tuning in. Uh, where is Joseph Kim Ikimanzi? Ah, uh, I am here. Where are you? 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 After Matu. After Matu. Yes. <laughs> yes. But you are able to, 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 to get us loud and clear, right? Yeah, I'm able to get. Awesome, awesome. Now I see we are 20. Nani mwingine si jasalimia? Before I now start officially. I've not heard from the ladies and I can only see one lady, uh, Lillian. Lillian, how are you? And Celestine. Hi, I'm well. How are you? Are you on the road? I'm in the garage. Ati? I'm in the garage. Oh, you're in the garage? Yeah. Where is my someone Ningumu? Okay. <laughs> One more lady, Celestine. How are you? Celestine? Yes, yes. How are you? I'm fine, thank you. How is the going? Well, Koapi. I'm on the road heading somewhere. You're on the road heading somewhere? Stop. Sorry? I'm trying to find somewhere to stop. So oh, to stop and, and attend yes. the class? Yes. Sawa, sawa. So thank you so much for being able to join us this afternoon. I know it's a Friday. A lot of us are looking towards the, the, the weekend starting. I don't know if you guys work on Saturday, but as you don't work on Saturday. So if, if you don't work on Saturday, I think you are in that category of people like me who are ant very anticipating for the weekend. Uh, but today I'll be leading the course for you. So let's just start, uh, move uh, as we can, and then let's also make it very interactive. Uh, I know I had introduced myself when we started, but in case uh, either someone has forgotten me, uh, my name is Purity Wanjiro. I am the director for Acurex, uh, Leadership and Management Consultants Limited. Uh, we've done this for quite a while, uh, for five years, but my career runs for over 10 years. And where, where I started was mainly on learning and development. Uh, and learning for me, what we now today call training is, is more of a passion for me than a business. Uh, though today I don't do as many trainings as I used to do back in the day, but it's such a privilege to have you on board today. And today we'll be talking about um, product market penetration, uh, product positioning and creating strategic uh, alliances. So from the very basic, and I think any business, and I believe your business as well as Amiran, you are always looking for ways to, to penetrate new markets or even penetrate existing markets. And you always, you're looking towards how do we position our products better? How do we position our services better? And at the same time, you, you keep asking yourself, 
which that which is that partnership or which is that alliance I'm able to create for my business, so that I'm able to 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 make my business more profitable, to sell more definitely, and as salespeople, I know this is a topic that must be very close to your heart, that you keep asking yourself, how can I make my next big sale? You know, be it to the same customer that is existing or be it to even to a new customer. So I, I, I have segmented this topic into three parts. Uh, the product market penetration, that will do as part one. Then part two will do product positioning. Then the last bit will do strategic alliances. So I, I've also, uh, I have as part of the class design, we have a, a, a number of group works that we'll be doing. So I'll encourage all of us to join to join me, especially when we send you to the groups, just to do the group works because I believe like you know your business much 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 better than I do, and and these group works normally helps us to brainstorm different ideas around the topic that we are handling today, when it comes to to products and market penetration, uh, positioning and alliances. So uh, for today, I'll start with a quote by Kevin Orell. Uh, he's a very famous uh, Canadian businessman. And this is what he had to say. Like business is war. I go out there, I want to kill the competitors. I want to make their lives miserable. I want to steal their market share. I want them to fear me. And I want everyone on my team thinking we are going to win. And I and for me, when I was speaking this quote, I felt like it's very relevant. Like today, like business is like war. Every day you wake up, every day you go to sleep. And as more so as a, as a salesperson, you'd want to make it as a war. You know, as uh, for competitors for Amiran, I know you have quite a number of competitors. I remember I, I, when I was checking your survey results. And you want to, 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 to kill them. To kill them literally would mean get them out of business. You know, you want to, to steal their market share. You want to steal their customers. And you also want to, your competitors to, to instill a bit of fear on, on them that you are better than they are. Then you also want to, to bring together all your team and tell them like, look guys, we are able to make the sale. Like we are able to make it uh, based on what we are, we have planned. So that is a, a quote. It's a bit, it's a bit, <laughs> it's it's almost like a joke. So or our nice way of starting the, the the class today. So you think about it. Every day you wake up. Every day you want to go to meet your customers. Just know it is war that you should be preparing for. You know, and you need to win at the end of the day. So our uh, Moving on straight to uh, when you talk about this topic of, of penetration, positioning, and then alliances, normally it falls on a, a wider or a larger topic that we call business growth strategies. And business growth strategies are is normally a way that we look from a business perspective. How do we grow our business? How do we make the next million? How do we sell the extra 100,000 units of a product? How do we give excellent services to our customers? So that is, our, that is normally what we'll call business growth strategy. And by this, under the, the, the BCG our strategy, we have four, four, four other strategies. One is market penetration. The other one is market development strategy. The other one is product development strategy and diversification strategy. So you see, uh, as a business or as a salesman, I will be very keen on all the four. As much as today, we'll only be talking uh, to a large extent about three of the strategies. But as a as a as 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 a person who mainly deals with sales, I'll be keen to see, am I able to penetrate the market? Am I developing new markets or even developing existing markets? Uh, what kind of products are we rolling out to the, to, to the markets? And then you ask yourself, are we diversifying enough? 
So as we move on, I'll give you different examples uh, to address these uh, business growth strategies. But for now, let us look into market penetration. Uh, before I go to market penetration, I'll want to engage you. What do you think is market penetration? Anyone? Someone, someone, please. What is market penetration in your own terms? Anyone? What is market penetration? Okay, I see a chat. Yes, you written. Yes, please, Bernard. Um, according to my understanding, it is the ability mm -hmm. to place your product mm -hmm. and make sure that it has a grip in the market and it is mm -hmm. well-known brand. Yes, it's well known. That is one thing I would I would I would want to highlight from what you said. It is well known and it's a brand. You know, like Amiran is a brand. Anywhere you see that green, even before you we own a Vizuri, you should be clicking your mind. This is a brand. You know, uh, Lilian has said uh, a product, uh, a product entry to the market. That is uh, uh, market penetration. So, and that those two feedbacks are very correct because this means you have a product and you have a market on the other hand. Then how do we bring this product to the market? So we'll see how different uh, people have defined uh, ma market penetration as a strategy. This refers to, uh, this, sorry, uh, this refers to when a company attempts to grow using existing products to existing markets. So you see it's an existing product and an existing market. For example, our, I, I think it's in this group that I was saying you sell greenhouses to flower farms or people who do greenhouse farming. You see that's already an existing product, which is a greenhouse and an existing market is one of your clients that does either flowers or tomatoes or anything that grows under a greenhouse. So you, you, so what you really need to, 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 to remember from this or your takeaway home point is with market penetration, it's an existing product and an existing market. Then we see how best are we able to bring this already existing product to an existing market. So another way of defining market penetration, one, it's a measure and the other one is an activity. Why we, we also define market penetration as a measure is to help us do, to, to make better decisions. Uh, I'll move on. Yes, market penetration rate. Normally, this is how it's calculated. I know it's a bit technical. For those of us, math is not our best friend. This is how you calculate it. The number of customers that you have over a target market size times 100. So normally it will give you as a percentage. What this means is, for example, you are in a market that contains say a thousand customers, but you're only able to sell to 10 of, uh, not to 10, to a hundred of them. So it will be a hundred divided by a thousand, which gives you 10%. You get my point. So, and, and the recommended market rate is normally between 10 and 40%, because we know the market that you, you exist, you're not the only person, there are competitors. You know, and and look at monopolies like Kenya Power. They never thought one day they will have competitors competitors who are solar power. You know, today all our houses come with a, a package of solar power of, of the solar systems. So that is the assumption that the market that you exist in, you're not the only player in that market. And I believe the 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 same, it's the same even for Amiran. You're not the only company in Kenya or even in the larger East and Central of Africa that deals with agricultural products. But why do we define market penetration as a measure? 
why we make we, we use it as a measure is to to make decisions you know ideally sales people will not be interested in market penetration as a measure but i believe either the director of marketing or the director of sales will be very keen to know what is our market penetration rate so that we know how much effort do we need to put so that we are able to penetrate this market because for example if you your uh, penetration rate is 50 percent then you really don't need to put a lot of effort to market your product but when your penetration rate is five percent then we need to make a decision do we continue or make more effort towards uh marketing this product or do we pull out the product from the market so normally with the measurement part it is used mostly for decision making uh let's move our okay uh let's see how do we improve market penetration strategy especially using the measurement pass number one is price and price can be categorized in two different ways either price was or price leadership so this one i'll still want to throw it back to you who who can define for us what's what are price wars or price leadership either anyone what is price war what is price leadership and based on our on our previous classes i know price is such a huge uh, factor for you guys so how do you define price wars or price leadership anyone you can send it on chat or you just unmute yourself and 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 let me hear you. Galaxy, Steven, <laughs> Hezbon, Joseph Kimanzi, talk to me, guys. Okay. So, price wars is normally, and I see a lot of these price wars, say, for example, in the Middle East, where the cost of fuel, and like in Kenya, Middle East cost of fuel is pretty, pretty low, you know. So price wars is where company A says we are selling oil at 10 shillings, for example. Then company B says, no, we are going to sell it at 12 shillings. So you see now there's, the customer has a, an option of 10 and 12. Then you, there's another person who comes and says, no, I'll sell it at eight shillings. Now we have eight, 10 and 12. So, and then we have company A, B, and C. You'll find company A can make a decision and say, you're no longer selling at 10 shillings, you're selling it at seven shillings. So you see the, he has, or the, the company A has downplayed both company B and C. So that is price was where different vendors or different companies play with price. It's, they still make profit, but they know this is the lowest we can go. Also, I, I'll give you an example of uh, Stella. So wait, Sasa, Aki. Okay, Stella na pena story uko. <laughs> so uh, that is with price wars. With price leadership is when you have such a, a huge market share that you are able to dictate the price. For example, maybe you sell seeds at, I don't know how much seeds are sold at, maybe 500 shillings, uh, uh, maybe uh, 100 grams, I would assume. So you see, such that you, are, you as a company or uh, as Amiran, you are able to dictate the price in the market. That is normally called price leadership. So normally, with, with, there are different ways you can penetrate the market. You can decide, let us do price goals try and see what your competitors are doing in the market and offer almost the same. Alternatively, if you're very popular, and this will only work if you're popular with price leadership, then you're able to set, to put a very premium price. Look at companies like Samsung. Also look at companies like Mercedes. Those ones are able to dictate price of the products that they, that they sell because we people really trust on them on the brand that, that they carry. 
Uh, another way is product improvement. I remember, I, I think it, it was in our last class, uh, someone was saying, our seeds do not germinate, unlike for another company. So you see, that's a way that maybe you need to improve on the products that you're selling. Another way is consistency, making sure that all the time you have, you have stock. You don't have stock outs or you don't have, uh, what are they called, delay in delivery of stock or products to your customers. Another way is marketing. Marketing is a whole topic on its own, but a lot of marketing effort has to be put if you want to penetrate any market. Then there's product positioning. This one will talk about more in detail uh, as we continue on today's session. Then the next one is the user experience. How do your customers feel when they buy from you or when they, they request something from you? That is user experience. And user experience cuts across very different things. Like how, what was the turnaround time? If I place an order, you say you'll deliver in 24 hours. Are you able to deliver on 24 hours? If they, you did not deliver, did you communicate? Uh, also, in terms of even the pricing, I know some customers are very keen on pricing and all that. So that is some of the few ways you can be able to improve on uh, market penetration. So uh, moving on, though I'd like to take a pause in case anything is not clear up to that point. And I hope we are together, all of us. All right, so uh, we have defined market penetration as a measurement. Then now let's move to market penetration as an activity. And I think now a lot of us fall into this category. We do market penetration as an activity, like it's our day-to-day -day job, trying to get our already existing products to our already existing market. So market penetration as an activity is a process of going to the market with a product in an existing market in which the current, in which current or similar products live and taking market share from other competing companies. This was defined by Igro in 1957. I know that's so long ago, but it's a management principle that you are able to take an already existing product to an already existing market and be able to take the market share even from your competitors. So uh, let, let me ask you, who do you think is your biggest competitor as Amiran? Paulo, who is your biggest competitor for Amiran? You are muted. We have Ergon and, uh, Ergon and uh, uh, Green Life. Ergon and Green Life. And Twiga. Oh, and Twiga. Yes. Awesome. Uh, Kimanti, you wanted to say something? So, uh, it, uh, as we had said earlier, mm -hmm. Amiran, you know, we have different departments, as you see, and we are doing different things. So, you yes. find that uh, in every department, they have their okay. own. Competitor. Competitor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay, okay, like, okay. Like now, what we, what I, where I am, uh -huh. at my market, mm -hmm. is the fertilizers and pesticides. Mm -hmm. My biggest competitor is uh, Green Life and uh, Syngenta. Okay, the mm -hmm. biggest competitor maybe is uh, Syngenta and Green Life. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. Yeah. So you see, for the case of uh, Paulo and Kimanthi, you are working in the same company, but you have different competitors based on the department that you are in. Then I, I would assume every day you wake up, you would want to, to think, today I'm going to, to, to steal, in a good way, customers that belong to Sigenta or Twiga or, uh, or Elgon, you know. So that is market penetration as an activity. So uh, here we have a two by two matrix. What a two by two matrix does is, is you remember when I was starting uh, the class today, I said, 
all these efforts are geared towards uh, business growth. And, and when you want to develop new markets, it's business growth. You know, when you want to diversify, you, your main goal is to grow as a business. So this, this two by two matrix normally makes things pretty, pretty simple because they tell you if you, are, you, you, you have an existing market with an existing product, bottom left, I hope everyone can see, bottom left, existing market, existing product, then what you have to do is market penetration. Are we together? But when you have an existing market, but you want to, uh, no, when you have an existing product and you want to venture into new markets, then it becomes market development. Are we together up to that point? If you have an existing product, say an already existing fertilizer, but you want to sell it to a region that you are not, you, you are not in that region. From when you were starting, I, I saw a lot of, of you were saying they come from, are uh, they are in Karatina, eh, Matu? That I would assume is the eastern, is it eastern really, the central region of Kenya. So, for example, if you want to go to Trukana, I would assume that will be a new market for you, but it's with already existing products. So you'll want to do something we call in 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 business growth strategy, market development. Then the other one is we have a new product, but an, in an already existing market. The fact that you're in Karatina, I would assume it will be easy to introduce a new product. But what we, what we call that is product development. You have, uh, you have a customer that buys fertilizers, but now you, 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 you think you can be able to also sell greenhouses to them. Then that becomes product development. Then the very last one, which involves new markets and new products, is called diversification. You're moving to unfamiliar territory with a new product that becomes diversification. So this two by two matrix, I would want like all of us to even note it down in a book somewhere, such that if you have an existing product and you're going to an existing uh, market, you know what I'm doing today is market penetration. But if I have a new product and a new uh, market, you know that what you're going to do is you're going to do diversification. Uh, is that clear up to that point? Please take note of this because I'm, uh, we have group work coming up shortly and it will be based on this. Uh, moving on, what do we do to be able to penetrate the market or increase market share? Because we have said we want to, to, to steal customers from Syngenta, we want to steal customers from real life, from Elgon, from Twiga, then how are we able to steal these customers? One is lowering or raising our prices. That is a price strategy. Pricing is a whole topic also on its own, you know, because when we talk about pricing, that's when we introduce things like uh, price wars, as I've said, price leadership, undercutting, you know, our, our, what else is it called? Ho holding holding uh, products such that you create a demand in the market. And when that demand comes in, then you can sell at a premium price. So pricing is a whole game on its own. The other one is increasing your marketing and promotional efforts. Do we have people in the marketing department on, on today's class? Anyone from marketing department? You can say yes or, or raise your hand or do something. I'm asking you what any sales. Okay, I would assume we have people from marketing department. Uh, two is acquiring a competitor in your market and partnerships. This, this could be easy or difficult depending on how you look at it. Because you could say from today we are merging uh, Amiran and Syngenta. So both of our customers now become our customer as, as one. 
Uh, number four is revamping your digital marketing roadmap, brand awareness. Because when I was preparing for this class, I, I, I happened to like visit your, your Instagram page. I went to Facebook, I went to Twitter. Not so much is going on. So I think the, 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 the what? The concerned people need to take that as feedback, you know, because I, uh, also on the on the point of digital uh, marketing, I think today a lot of farmers are not the traditional farmers. Some of us are white collar farmers, you know, we have an office, uh, we have a job in an office somewhere, but we have taken interest in farming. So we, we our part is only to to invest, you know, to put in capital. And you see, if you, you use traditional marketing methods, you might miss out on the white collar farmers. I would want to assume. Uh, another way is modifying your products and to specifically solve your customers' problems. Like the issue of seeds not germinating, either all of them or at a certain rate that is expected, then it means you need to do product reengineering. Find out why are these seeds not germinating? Why are they not doing X, X, X? Why are our products not meeting our customers' demands or problems? Then re-engineer that around those products to be able to fulfill that. Then the last one is developing new products to attract new customers. If every day we wake up to sell to the new, to, to already existing customers, how often do you think they will buy our things from us? Because I think like maize, I'm told maize can grow within, I think three months or six months. So you see, if I need to buy fertilizer, I'll only either buy at the beginning of the season and I'm done with that bit of work. So if to, to, to acquire new customers, then you need to, to keep re-engineering and coming up with new, new products. So I, I hope you are good so far up to that point. So I'd like to close the topic of market penetration uh, with these two key points. One is a uh, market penetration strategy involves selling, uh, selling more of your products into an existing market. I think that one is like your takeaway point. If you want to penetrate any market, especially an existing market, then you need to sell more. You know, and I know salespeople are, I think they are the most people in any organization that have immense pressure, like you're told, you're not hitting your targets, like we need to sell X millions this month. So if you are going the market penetration route, it means you need to sell more to your already existing customers. Then uh, with strategic planning around pricing, competition, uh, promotional efforts, and any other changes on your products, this should uh, possibly increase your market share and you slowly gain dominance. Because if, if, if you're a farmer, a few weeks ago, maybe like three or four weeks ago, uh, we went out to do like shopping for, for a, pig, uh, a, a, a pig farm that we have. And, and you can imagine the options that are in the market. You know, we got into one aggravate, uh, one aggravate, I, I would call it a shop or something. And we were like, to nataka hi dawa. We were given a range of like five medicines. We were told, no, 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 it's the same medicine. It's only that it's sold by different companies. You see, I, if at that point, Amiran had market dominance, I'll be like, I want this from Amiran. So that is what market penetration means. That what the efforts that you put towards market penetration, it's on top of the mind of your customer. If they want a fertilizer, they, they only think fertilizer, you, you, you say straight ahead, I want from Amiran and such. So that is market penetration strategy uh, for us. Uh, I'd like us to, to uh, I'd like to push us to group works. Are we ready for group work? It's almost 40 minutes since we started. I believe we are ready for group works. Cindy, hi, Eric. 
Eric, unmute yourself and talk to me. Okay, uh, this is the group work that we have. Uh, I have explained four markets, uh, no, four uh, business growth uh, strategies. One is market penetration, where you have an existing market and an existing product. The other one is product development, where you have existing market but a new product. We have market development. We have a, a new market with an existing product. And the last one is diversification. A new market, new product. So giving us one example per strategy and reason for that. Give us an example of, 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 of your company, you know, like you will know, this is what, I, for example, give me one name of a fertilizer. A name of a fertilizer. I believe they have names. Anyone? Or Agromaster. one name of, Sorry? Agromaster. Agromaster. It's a fertilizer, right? Yes. Awesome. So Agromaster is, is, is an existing product. Then you give me an, exist, uh, an example of an existing market where you sell it. Maybe you sell it in Karatina. So that one becomes, why would you say it falls under market penetration? I need your reasons. Because it was developed, maybe the Agromaster was developed maybe five years ago. Uh, but the market, you've been in that particular market for also maybe three years, then that product and that existing market falls under market penetration. Is my example clear of what I require from you for the group works? Victoria, please say yes or no, if it's not clear. It's clear, it's clear to repeat. It's clear, awesome. Uh, I'm giving you uh, groups of five. Uh, groups of five. No, five groups. So each group will have about six people. So I, I, I would require four answers from you or four examples from you. One example for market penetration, product development, diversification, and all that. So uh, uh, this assignment, we can do it in about uh, eight minutes so that we come back at 2.55. All right, uh, please go to your rooms. Please go to your rooms and, and, and discuss what's on your screen. Please join your group. Join the groups. group one. I'm group one. Hey, join group. Join group. I see a few people have not joined their groups. So kindly join your group. Please join your group if you haven't.
Hi guys, welcome back. Are we all back? I will assume so. Are who which group wants to go first? Any group that wants to go first? Talk to me, guys, please. Let's save some Hello. time. Yes, yes. Let, let, room, let room five attempt. All right, room five, let's start. Uh, number one, ex uh, existing markets, existing product. Mm -hmm. We took uh, mm, the market is the tomato and coffee, coffee farmers or coffee farming. Mm -hmm. So we took uh, Agromaster. Yes. Yeah, the, I don't know when you say, give, give one, one example per strategy and reasons for that. Uh -huh. you, 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 want, you want me to give the attributes of Agromaster? So I will expect, why did you choose Agromaster for as an existing uh, product in an existing market? Because it will solve most of the problems farmers are having in terms of nutrition. Okay, awesome. Next. Yes, uh, number two, existing mm -hmm. markets, new new products. Mm -hmm. uh, we have uh, a, 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 a pesticide, mm -hmm. a, three, a, a three pesticide for trips. That is that mm -hmm. is. Mm -hmm. So there, there is a market for the for for, for three pesticides. Okay. But now, now we are, we are, we are, we are, we are introducing a new product in that, in that market. In, in an, uh, in an already existing market. Yes. Yeah, so we are, 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 we the three pesticide, insecticide. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes, it's an existing market. Okay. So, so we have the the gladius, the mm -hmm. our new our new product because it will of course it will hit trips in a very good way. Mm -hmm. Yes, that's why that's why we are, we are introducing it. Mm -hmm. Um. Then number three. Mm -hmm. uh, new markets, existing products. Mm -hmm. Uh, same, uh, the insect side for, we have, we have taken an av avocados markets and it's a new, it's a new market for us. Mm -hmm. it, it, it was not there before. Mm -hmm. So we, we, we would like to, for example, register our products for avocado use. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. And we are, we, we have a number of them for fruit fly for se se several of them for. But is, is the product existing? Sorry, is the product existing? The product you're talking about? Uh, yeah, we, we, we are. We, are we, we have a number of them that are existing. Okay. 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 Mm -hmm. yes. yes. Then number four. Mm -hmm. New markets, new 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 products. Okay. Uh, yeah. We, we, the, the same same. Uh, uh, avocado is a new is a, is a new market. Then we, we introduce another new product for for, for that segment because we are, we are we are we are. We are yeah, that avocados market. So, is that like something you are currently engineering? Yes, yes, yes. Okay, if, awesome. If, if, if not, someone must be taking notes. Uh, <laughs> okay. Then, then, then we, we, for example, you go for seeds. For example, we, we took there is mm -hmm. a, there is a new a, a new type or a new a new variety of watermelon. We call we call mm -hmm. it personal water, personal watermelon. Mm -hmm. We are introducing in a market that, that do not know that type of a market for, mm -hmm. for, for a melon, like for, for you, purity. Mm -hmm. uh, a melon that is one kilo to one and a half kilos in size that you can eat alone. You don't, you don't need to have a group. Oh, really? Yes. So, so, so that you don't. You don't stress the hell out of me. They don't even fit in my fridge. <laughs> <laughs> so we, we, we have, we have, we have, we have, we have, we have, we have polymer. Mm -hmm. 
that, that is the word, the, the name of the watermelon. We are introducing in a new, mm. in a, a new segment. Although we know the watermelons are existing, but the ones that I'm, the one that we're talking about is not that there. Product new market, right? Yeah, yeah we create we create a new product. We create a new market for mm. ourselves. And, 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 and do you know how we call it? Sandwich market. Mm -hmm. And you call yeah. it what? Sandwich market. Sandwich market. It's not sandwich. It's a niche market. Oh, a niche market. <laughs> <laughs> yes, niche sandwich. All right. Thank you so much, Group Five. Uh, in, uh, the next group. The next group, please. Group two. Group two, yes, Paulo. Paulo, yes. Uh, when we come to product penetration, mm -hmm. where we have uh, existing market and uh, existing products. Yes. We need uh, to have, uh, for example, we have a superior uh, the tomato variety. Mm -hmm. Like uh, we have Anzo. Mm -hmm. Now, when we come to product penetration, mm -hmm. we have already the market and the existing product. So we need to do a lot of training on that product so that it can uh, continue to be in the market for a long time. Mm -hmm. uh, the other one is uh, on product development, mm -hmm. where we have an existing market. Mm -hmm. For example, and yes. a new product. We have a new product like a uh, happy sign for selective for maize. Mm -hmm. And the existing market is already there for weeding of the maize. Mm -hmm. So that is uh, when we come to product development. We have that new product is Maximus. And yes. existing existing market, uh, we have a lot of farmers doing maize and they need a selective for the maize. Mm -hmm. uh, for new market and existing products, mm -hmm. my market development of that product, for example, yes. now where we have a problem of a tutor, mm -hmm. absolute in tomato, mm -hmm. and we have the existing product we have. For example, we have proof, we have rapid, we have Randian. Mm -hmm. So we need to, to develop that market of that product. Mm -hmm. Uh, the other one, uh, diversification, mm -hmm. uh, we have a new market, a new product. Uh, yeah. For example, there is cases of uh, snails in uh, rice farming. Mm -hmm. There are a lot of snails in rice farming. Mm -hmm. With a new product, with the other company they don't have, maybe is it now we are doing the diversification of the, of the product where we, need, we don't have a lot of competition. Mm. Yes. Awesome. Thank you so much. I like the fact that uh, you talked about diversification. Like you're you're venturing into a new into a new market with not yes. so many yeah, uh, like the rice thing for snails. You know, yes. if you're able to conquer that, then you are able to diversify. Though yeah. I also at some point I would want to look at it. The fact that it could be a new product, but for an already existing market, you know, existing to mean you are selling to the same farmers, you know, yeah. like the farmers that grow rice are still the same farmers who will benefit from the snails, uh, snails for medicine. Yes. <laughs> All right, group two, thank you so much. We move either to group one, three or four. Group one. Eh? Group one, Benta. You're called yes. Benta. Yeah, sure, sure. Okay. Though we were caught up with time, so I think the fourth one we are missing out, but uh, the rest I can just tell you what we discussed. Please. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the first one was existing market and existing product. Yes. We talked about tomato variety and sun. Mm -hmm. It's a bacterial tolerant bacterial tolerant variety that uh, can grow well in, uh, in uh, regions whereby the bacterial will is a menace and it has uh, also TY tolerant in the areas like Loitoktok, you get me? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. yeah, and uh, number two, we are having existing market and uh, new product. We discussed about Mwamba Super, that is a grain powder for storage purposes. Okay. Yeah, so uh, it uh, lengthened the, the 
storage of uh, the grains, if it's maize, if it's these other cereals and that. Mm -hmm. And uh, another one, the third one is a new market and existing product. Yes. We talked yes. about uh, uh, Maridadi, that is a watermelon variety that mm -hmm. is mostly, it's mostly uh, appreciated in the coast area. Mm -hmm. unlike other areas yeah so the new market and new product that is the diversification okay we were caught up with time but i think we can still think about it and from whatever your explanations are at least we can get an understanding of that of, of what is the diversification yeah sure sure awesome why is maridadi likes more at the coast mm -hmm. okay maybe i have to welcome the members who <laughs> whom we are with, I'm not directly on seeds, uh -huh. but they can just come in. Diana, if you're getting me, please. Diana. Diana. Okay, I don't think she's there. Oh, she's there. Yes, please, Diana. Yeah. Okay, so for the, what are we asking? Mary Daddy. So, why is it more liked more at the coast? Mm -hmm. That's a question. Yeah. Yes. What's the question? The question is, I've asked why is Maridadi more liked at the coast? Uh, because, uh, okay, so it's a variety of watermelon that uh, is well adapted to the hot climate. Okay. So it's, uh, yeah, that's why we've, uh, we have uh, excellent uh, performance and acceptability of the products along the, it's, it's not on, actually not only the cost, but uh, it's uh, majorly in the hot climatic conditions, the varieties are well performed. So cost is one of the key reasons. Awesome. Thank you so much, uh, Diana and uh, Victoria, uh, no, Benta from group one. Let's move to group three or group four. Group three, group four. Group three, we had Duncan Jaroge, Johnson Mwangi, Lillian Ngendo, and Peter Miner. One of you can say something. Lillian, or Duncan, or Johnson. Okay, uh, group four. Group four, please. Talk to us so that you can move forward. Group four, there was Caro, Caro Baraza, uh, Edward Otieno, Eric, and Joseph Kimanzi. All right. Uh, I'm not so sure why you're not talking to us, but uh, we have to move forward at this point. Someone confirmed they can see my screen. Okay, uh, okay. So uh, thank you so much for all the groups that have participated in the group work. Uh, now I want us to move quickly to positioning. You know, we've really talked about penetrating a product into a market, you know, whether it's new, whether it's existing, whether the product is also new and whether it's existing. We've checked on all those scenarios. Then now you have penetrated a market how then are you able to position what you are offering the market? So the goal for any business is to ensure that it has visibility both, on, uh, both in the marketplace and in the minds of its customers. I'll, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll want to ask a few questions. Like for example, if I ask you which soda do you want to drink? Anyone, anyone, which soda would you like to drink? 
let's answer as fast as possible so that this example of mine becomes relevant to you. I want to start. Coca-Cola. Yes, yeah? Coca Coca-Cola, very good. Yeah. Uh, I want a washing powder. A washing powder, anyone? Very fast. Ariel. Ariel. Uh, I want uh, margarine, like what we spread on our bread. Anyone? Blue band. Blue band, very good. Uh, I want uh, a car. Which make will I go for? Toyota. 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 <laughs> very well. That example shows you that people buy brands that they are familiar with. You know, when I say I want a soda, why did you not say Pepsi? Like it, it should be the last thing on your mind. But Coca-Cola is the first thing. For I want a washing powder. Very strange to hear Ariel because I expected you'll say Omo. <laughs> because I know even when we send children to, to, to the shop, you say, I know the letter Omo ya Ariel. Why would you start with Omo and then Ariel? Familiar brands, like people buy brands that they're familiar with. I tell you, which car do you want to buy or which car are you, would you wish to have? The first thought is Toyota. You forget that like, we have luxury cars like Mercedes. We have luxury cars like, uh, luxury cars are uh, like what? The, the, the Range Rovers that are coming up. For Ranger. At you, what else? Ford, for Ranger. Oh uh, yes, for Rangers, the luxury cars. But you want the, the car mm. that <laughs> someone is clicking. <laughs> uh, I recently had, uh, or people are saying, like I'm in one of those many groups of people who own cars that were saying, previously it was the car in front of you is always a, a Toyota, right? But today people are saying the car in front of you is a, a Mazda. And not just a Mazda, is a Mazda Demio. So you can imagine now Mazda or Mazda in Kenya is overtaking Toyota, for example. Uh, someone is talking about pumpers. Pumpers are diapers. You know, when you say, I want a diaper, the first thought that comes to mind is pumpers. So this is what it means about positioning that people know you like you are on, they, they know your product as in, on top of their heads. And also in the marketplace, if, for example, you ask, give me a fertilizer, which is, yeah, I'm Iran. That would mean you have already taken a position in, in the market. So let's move on and see how best, or, or define a few and then I'll go to the practicality of it. So market uh, product positioning is a marketing term referring to the placement of a brand of product that takes up the mind of its target customers and how it differentiates from the products of its competitors. What do we mean? Still on the issue of, for example, the, the, the soda. I've taken Pepsi, I think in Uganda, like Uganda, they don't have like Coke is not Pepsi, Mirinda, the Mirinda soda. In Uganda, Coke is not as popular as it is here. So the first thing, the first restaurant I got in, immediately I got uh, to the airport, I was like, I want a soda. Mirinda, I was like, I don't want this. I've never had it. Can I have Coke? That particular restaurant, they did not have Coke. They were like, hey, Upper Tuzi Coke, we only sell Mirinda. But taking it, the taste is almost not the same, but almost the same, like soda, Tuni soda, you know. But why would I be so keen to ask for, for a Coke and not Mirinda? Because it's not a familiar product. I don't know it like so well. And also, it's not in, on top of my mind. And then I'm able to differentiate. Uh, are to differentiate, like why do I want Coke and not Mirinda, for example? So, so that is product 
positioning. So moving forward, let's see. So whenever we talk about product positioning, this is what we need to put into consideration. What is the target market? Who are we targeting with this product? Who do we want it to make it available to? Earlier I was talking about the white collar farmers. Why do you want to bring this product on Instagram or Twitter where you clearly know farmers are not on Instagram and not on Twitter? Because now it means you are shifting your focus to, to, to farmers that are not actual farmers, they're like investors in the farming industry. Then you look, the next thing you need to consider how you solve the problem for your customers. This solution, I've heard about the, the watermelon, the, 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 this tiny one. I will really want to have it because every time I buy a watermelon, by the time you can nusu, it's almost spoiled because it's too big for people who are eating. So me personally, I'll be very interested. If you give me the smaller watermelon, I'm happy to, to buy it anytime. Then the other one is your unique advantage in the market. Uh, I've heard you talk about the thrips. You're saying it, it's a new product, it's a new market. That is now, now that becomes your unique advantage point. You'll say this is a new product. It has not been in the market before, but you tried it, you tested it. It's able to solve the problem that you have as a customer. Then the next one is how can you improve your product deliver? Uh, how can you prove that your product delivers results? I don't know if you do this in your company, but I, I know I consulted a while back for another agricultural based uh, company and they had their own farm. Like Apple took office yao, the office yao ilikuwa tu shago, but around their office they had like a farm. So when, when they engineer the product, they would test it on their crops. So if if there's some is if there's a customer that comes and asks you how will I know this will work then they take them to to that farm. I don't know if you do that. Is that something that you do? Like you have your own like shamba where you test out things. Yes, husband. We have. Or you have your own shambas, right? Uh, uh, yeah, kule nyuma. Oh, kule nyuma ni wapi? Behind the office? Yes. Eh, well, you test out things. So you see, if you are able to test, then you are able to provide proof to your customers. And even with confidence and tell them, pay us a visit, come and see what, we, what I am talking about. Yes. So yes. that is what we really need to consider whenever we, we talk about positioning. And as you can see, the difference between positioning and market penetration, we've not talked about price at any point because when you're positioning a product, price is not a factor. Please note that if you're positioning a product, price is not a factor. I'll tell you, uh, soda here costs about how much? Uh, soda, how much? 50 bob, I think, I'm a 60, thereabout. But you know, in another in uh, in another part of the world, soda is about uh, ten dollars. Ten dollars, ni how much? Like a hundred, kala kadogo, and it could even go to about fifteen dollars, twenty dollars, twenty five dollars. So you see, with Coke, price is not a factor. I bought I bought Coke in in, in Kigali, maybe like two years ago. Mm, how much did it cost? It costed about uh, 150 shillings. And this is that very tiny soda we buy here, I think 35 bob or 40 shillings. So you see, if you are a royal customer, price is not a factor. So that is what it takes to product positioning. When you're positioning your product, what is on top of your mind is not the price, is, is the solution. Like what solution am I making available? to my customers. Uh, moving forward, uh, here we have two types of positioning, accidental and intentional. Anyone who would want to attempt what this is or what this means, 
What will it mean to accidentally position a product? What will it mean to intentionally position a product? You can take it with its, its simple meaning or for accident or intentional. Anyone, the floor is open now. Anyone, please? Hesbon, please, attempt. I, I, I accidentally give an example by what I've seen. Mm -hmm. What I've seen our competitors doing with, the, with their onions, trial and mm -hmm. error. Mm -hmm. So you place three, four varieties. Whatever, whatever will you pick, you will you pick. Whatever will you fail, you will fail. And then okay. you, you go with whatever will you pick. Oh, whatever picks, picks. Yes. So that one you'll call it accidental. Because you are not sure of what we are doing. <laughs> okay, I agree with you. Uh, Lillian, I saw your mic was on. Yeah, uh, let me try. For the accidental, I mm -hmm. would say maybe um, there was no plan whatsoever of... Uh, of introducing a product, then mm -hmm. apparently the, the most popular company that was distributing the, the product mm -hmm. happened to be out of stock, and mm -hmm. we happened to have the stocks of the same product, so we decided to let us sell and sell. But again, mm -hmm. it picks up immediately, and you realize that you get the market share because the other company is out of stock, so that now becomes like an accidental position. So now your product gets into the market because mm -hmm. the other was out, out of stock. Maybe that's what I'll say about the accidental. Mm, I 100% I agree with you. Uh, Brian, let's hear from you. It's another um, classic example. Mm -hmm. The product which we use to use the uh, what? Um, I can't hear you clearly. Can you hear me now? Better. better now. Good. Yes, there much is a, better. There is a product previously, sometime back, we used to use as a, a spreader. Basically, mm -hmm. a product which was supposed to enhance performance of uh, mm -hmm. other pesticides. Uh -huh. But uh, during the application, somebody in the farm mm -hmm. went a higher rate than the recommended rate. Mm -hmm. And then instead, it was found to control the pests that were also targeted in combination with other products. Mm -hmm. And uh, it turned out to be a very good product. So out of that accidental use rate, which was much higher, mm -hmm. the product became famous and uh, it sold quite a lot. Okay. So yes. you you would want to consider that accidental? It, it's purely accidental because uh, even from the manufacturer point of view, it was mm -hmm. known to be a spreader, uh, you know, an adjuvant mainly to enhance performance of others. It wasn't mm -hmm. known that it's standing alone, it can perform very well. But mm -hmm. upon somebody applying slightly higher rate, it is put mm -hmm. on its own, but it believes mm -hmm. it control mites, white flies very effectively. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. Yes. I, I, I totally agree with you. And and uh, with all of you, uh, Brian, uh, Lillian, and uh, Hesbon, that a lot of accidental positioning or a lot of product positioning normally is accidental. You know, you have not planned for it. And 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 I, I would tend to think the example has been gave of uh, giving the market three different varieties of onions and whichever picks is what you goes on with. It could be a, a little bit risky, you know. Like with accidental positioning is a bit risky because you don't know how the market is going to perceive it. You know, it could work, it could fail. But I've not heard any of you talking about intentional product positioning. Uh, anyone would want to talk about intentional product positioning? May I try yes, that? Mm -hmm. uh, so the intentional one is when you identify there's a huge gap in the market. Like maybe there's a product that nobody is really having a strong uh, market share. So you decide to actually come up with yours, like mm -hmm. um, that. That was actually you do a lot of trials for first it, and then now that's when you finally push it into the market, and mm -hmm. uh, then you realize that you're you actually take over the whole market because nobody else has reached that mm -hmm. level of quality that you have. So now mm -hmm. that is something that you have completely grasped because there was nobody else who was doing. It. I will okay. say maybe that is it. Mm. 
so uh, and I, I totally agree with you. Like with with intentional product uh, positioning, you have put thoughts into it. You know, like you have identified the product that you want to sell. You have identified the market that you want to sell to. Then your work is only to 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 make it public. You know, like this is what you are doing moving forward. This is what these are the customers uh, that you are targeting, and and being able to run with that. So that is a difference between uh, accidental and 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 intentional. Let me ask you, at Amiran. Do you use accidental or intentional? I've launched a poll. Just answer it if you can see it. Which works for us, accidental or intentional? Accidental or intentional? Okay. A lot of us are saying in intentional, which is good. But do you think we need to do more accidental? Anyone? Or which one do you think works better? Accidental or intentional? What do you think works better, accidental or intentional? Anyone, have I lost you guys? Which works, which do you think works better, accidental or intentional? Intentional. Intentional. A hundred percent, intentional. Like you have to plan and uh, to get better results. I know sometimes accidental can cheat us or, or, or give us a false confidence like we can do this. But intentional, I think in the wrong run becomes much, much, much better. So uh, moving on, uh, let's see. When to change the positioning strategy? That should be when to change the position strategy. You've done a few things here and there. You've placed a product. Sometimes it's the perception or the reception of it is not really working for you. Then when do we make this decision? Like men, we need to change our, our strategy. So one is changes in, in the market. And I believe the market keeps changing every so often, you know, like uh, I have another uh, client but for them, they only deal with end agricultural products like uh, bananas, the watermelons, and all those. So when I was talking to him the other day, he was telling me, hey, purity. I was like, Kwanini, you know, people are not eating as many bananas as they used to. I was like, why? Like boarding school or whatever that means. So you see, if he if his target market is households, then he might be forced to change from households to selling to schools who where these children are going so that they are not able to eat bananas at home. So changes in the market might force us to to change the strategy. Uh, the other one is your company or product have evolved over time. You said Amiran was started which year? Or oh, how old is Amiran? Amiran Kenya. Anyone? Anyone? How old is Amiran Kenya? Eh, hey, Hatuju, that is assignment. So you'll find the Amiran that started is not the same Amiran we have today. And it still not be the same Amiran that we'll have in five years or 10 years. So as the company changes or as you change your products, you continue changing the positioning strategy. 
Uh, the other one is a strong new competitor have entered you, your space. So for example, I don't know who got who in the market. Was it Sigenta that got Amiran or Amiran got Sigenta in the market? And you see, if these are two core competitors, it means when one enters the market, you need to change the strategy. Like what you're saying with, with, the, with, the, with the medicine for trips. Don't think it will take too long before your competitors know what you're doing. They will, they will actually know re-engineer a whole new product and introduce it to the same market. So when that happens, then you need to, to change your positioning strategy. Uh, the next one, your customers' needs have changed. That one is very straightforward. If your customers' needs change, then you also need to, to change your strategy. Uh, your, your company is undergoing a bigger change, such as rebranding, relaunching new products that no longer align to your current positioning. That one is also pretty straightforward. The last one is you're trying to get funding or get acquired. I, know, I don't know if your company normally gets funding. The fact that it is in the agricultural space, space, which is a lot of people have interest in. But if you try to go the funding way, then it really means that you need to change your position in the market. So uh, that is it. Uh, bottom line, this is my end point for this topic, or this is what you have to remember after we are done. If you've got a great product, but your customers don't seem interested, your position might be a core problem. So if you have a great product, it's not selling, it's not moving, then that one should let tell you that your positioning is, is wrong. So then you need to do something around your positioning strategy. Uh, then the last point that you need to remember from this particular topic is successful products positioning is rarely by accident. This one we've already said. It's never by accident like you place a product. It has to be very intentional. Let me ask you, why do you think Coca-Cola advertises every day in any news section in the world? I'll tell you for a fact. You go to New York, you'll come across a Coca-Cola uh, brand or a Coca-Cola advertisement somewhere. You go to London, the same. A day will not pass Kamojona advert ya Coca-Cola. You come back here home, the nine o'clock news or the seven o'clock news, there's a Coca-Cola advert going on. Why do you think that is the case? Yet they already have the biggest market share when it comes to, to beverage. It's because of the positioning. They don't want their customers to forget about them. So it's uh, positioning actually takes a lot of time and effort and understanding who your customers are including the, the target market that you're focusing on and the competitors that you want to, to fight in this, in, this, in this scenario. So uh, that is uh, on, 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 on market, uh, sorry, on product positioning. Any questions so far? Any question, any question? Are we all together? Someone say yes. Yes. Continue, Lillian, thank you. Thank you. Let's get to the last bit of it, uh, which is creating strategic alliances. What do we understand by strategic alliances? Let me go back there. What do we understand by strategic alliances? Yes, Victoria. Alliances are mergers. So mm -hmm. you might be having one uh, objective and then you merge and then you target that, uh, target that market. Okay, okay. Mergers are one type of strategic alliance. Thank you for that. Uh, anyone else? What do we understand by strategic alliances? Anyone, talk to me, talk to me either on the chat or here. Yes, Hezbon. 
an alliance is an engagement, an, an arrangement in between two or more entities. Mm -hmm. An arrangement so that is us? an arrangement that is is, is geared towards benefiting uh, both or all parties. Both or all parties. That's very good. Uh, an agreement. Uh huh. Uh, you said also a uh, partnership. Uh, uh, an engagement. Okay, an engagement. Very good. Thank you, Hesban. Uh, someone else. Then I, I go. I move forward to defining it. Talk to me, Benta. Talk to me. What, what are strategic alliances? Would it be a coalition? <laughs> a coalition. A geared towards achieving a common goal. Mm -hmm. Like what we, maybe they are not in, they're in business, the political parties, we always see coalitions yeah. towards. <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> I'll think of it that way too. Definitely, because uh, whenever we talk about strategic alliances, what it basically means is two people or two organizations or two entities coming together to benefit from one, from what one is missing with the other. You see, like the example Kennedy you've given, a very good example actually for political parties. You'll find, for example, one politician comes from one section of this country, the other politician comes from another section of this country. When they come together as a strategic alliance, what that means, I will get votes from my people in region A, and I also get votes from your people in region B. And, and by that merging, it will mean both of us will benefit or both of us, we, it's a win-win situation. So those are strategic alliances, but with strategic alliances, there's so many types. Uh, uh, Lillian talked about uh, mergers. Mergers is just one of them. They, we have partnerships. We have, uh, what else do we have? We have acquisitions and all this. So normally with strategic alliances, it, it on, it, in its most basic common uh, definition is when two people or two parties or two entities come together so that they can, they can benefit from each other. You know, like you have something, I also have something, let's come together so that we have a bigger, much bigger plate. So with, uh, but in, in management, when you define strategic alliances, it's an agreement between two organizations and they come with a purpose. Like, this is why we are collaborating. This is why we are coming together. And, and but at the same time, it means our both organizations remain independent. So uh, before I, I ask you a question on different uh, uh, alliances that you have as Amiran, so what normally happens is organizations take their time to invest in building uh, strategic alliances, have higher returns and profits. Because if, if two or three organizations come together and they're able to benefit from each other, then it means higher revenues, better profit, uh, profit margins and, on, and, and better relationship, greater market share as well, and all that. So, and done correctly, it takes it only takes a small number of strategic partners to have a positive impact. Because if, for example, if uh, Amiran and, and Sigenta or, or Twiga or whichever of your competitors, you're able to come up with a strategic alliance, I think jointly you are able to service more people than any of your companies independent. That would be my thinking. So at this point, uh, I don't want to send you into groups because I, I feel like uh, we are almost on top of the hour. Give me, like in our own setting, give me an example, either of an already existing alliance or a potential alliance Amiran could have in the market. Either existing or a potential alliance. You keep thinking or telling yourself, if we could partner with these people, then it will make a difference for our business. Take it a go, please. Anyone, either an existing partnership or a, a potential partnership that you think it will work for Amiran. 
Anyone? We are salespeople. Let us changamka. Yes, Lillian. Um, okay, mm -hmm. we have Semi or Monsanto and now us. Even, um, I can't hear you clearly. Sorry, can you hear me now? Much better. Okay. Continue. Uh, okay. Continue. I'm saying for seeds, mm -hmm. we have Semi, Stroke Monsanto, and uh, now us, Amiran. Mm -hmm. So we distribute, uh, we, we sell the seeds. Mm -hmm. And definitely, Seminity is its own, and us, we're on our own, but we still sell the seeds and we still manage mm -hmm. to gain a huge market share for the seeds. So at some time, even uh, most of our farmers are like, are you now Amiran or is it Seminity? Because the product will still read distributed by us, but mm -hmm. the packet is still from Semini, it's still is Semini, but we distribute the product in its IC. So it's a win-win situation for both of us because mm. we still manage to a good market share for the for the seeds and they still remain competitive without having a, a big thing. Awesome. So I, I would want to assume this, this uh, the fact that you're distributing, you've said potatoes? We sell the, no, they're called seminis. But you oh, tell them, yeah, semi, but just Monsanto. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. So you see, when you're you're busy distributing that for them, you're also busy selling your fertilizers and any other product that that Abiran is is selling. Yes. True. Yes, very true. That's a very good example. That's a very win-win situation for both of you. Okay. Uh, let 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 me get one more example as we as we continue. One more example, please. Yes, Joseph. Yes, uh, from my understanding on the topic, mm -hmm. on Nini uh, uh, partnership, I think uh, as Amir and we are selling fertilizers, mm -hmm. and we are meeting farmers on the ground who want to do some soil test, mm. and we are not doing soil testing. Uh -huh. We refer them to a company known as Cropnut sometimes. Uh -huh. So I think if Amiran can have a sound uh, business partnership and relation with Cropnut, yes. that uh, when we refer the farmers, mm -hmm. they take the soil samples to them. Mm -hmm. When it comes now to analyzing and giving solutions, mm -hmm. you, you find that sometimes you, you want to sell a Gromaster for Amiran. But when mm -hmm. you send the report to Cropnut, mm -hmm. they will come recommend the DAP, they will come recommend the CAN, mm -hmm. of which now it contradicts your, your intention to sell a Gromaster. So oh. then you come back again to start convincing the customer that uh, DAP, if, if they say DAP, we mm -hmm. can use a Gromaster 2032. Now it mm -hmm. becomes a, a something mm -hmm. uh, which is an end. So I think... Uh, it can be a win-win situation whereby Amiran, we are, mm -hmm. they, when they recommend, they recommend uh, uh, like uh, directly a Gromaster, this ratio, then mm. uh, us, they benefit from us because we are linking them with more customers, yes. Mm. Yeah. So that's a potential partnership, right? Yeah, that is a potential partnership. I totally agree with you. And you see, yeah. if, 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 if done correctly with PropNet, they yes. could be your biggest, your biggest alliance in the market because I know a lot of people have to go through crop nuts. You know, it's true, true, very true. And and that's a huge potential there. Like someone yeah. should take it up even from this trading. Like guys, let us approach crop nuts. Let's yes. tell them as much as they recommend DAP, yes. you can tell them the same components DAP has is what maybe Agromaster has. That's it's very true. Joseph. Thank you so much for that. Uh, anyone else? One more example, then we close. Yes, Stella. Stella? S Stella, I see you are unmuted. Okay, anyone else? One more example, then we move on. 
Yes, Benta. Uh, yeah, okay. I can say we are having an existing alliance with Bear East Africa mm -hmm. on some special products that uh, we are distributing for them. They supply us and we distribute for them. Mm -hmm. So still I can see the situation as a win-win situation mm -hmm. and also as an example to this strategic alliance. Awesome, awesome. Thank you so much, uh, Benta. Uh, so you see, with, with strategic alliances, these are the benefits. Like this is why we do it. You know, one is for business growth, because I feel like you are able to reach more people if you partner with someone else who, is, who has already been in that same market than if you, you are left to do it alone. And uh, the next potential of business growth definitely becomes increased revenue. Like there is something like you make sales more easy than you would have been doing it alone. Then two is additional value for clients. I'll go with the, with the example of CropNut because if I go to CropNut to get my soil tested, then I'm told, I uh, also talk to Amiran, they have a grow master. You see, you're giving me more value. And the same case, uh, uh, Amiran goes to sell and they tell you, hey, I think I need to start farming. Where do I start? You refer them to CropNet, like go get yourself tested first of all. So you see, as much as it's a win-win for the two organizations, it's also a win for, for the customer or the client because you're giving them a better value proposition. Uh, number four is new, uh, new introductions and referrals. That's pretty easy. Uh, enhance your value proposition. I think that is also aligned to point number three. Like your customers are getting more value from whatever you're, you're selling. Then the next one is offering more specialized services such that you don't have to be doing everything. You know, like Amiran getting into the business of testing soil, that is not your speciality. But partnering with a company or an organization that does sell choice, uh, testing, it makes you remain relevant or it makes you focus on your core business, which is, for example, uh, manufacturing fertilizers. Then for crop nut, they remain specialists for them who test soils. Then there is skills sharing. Both of you, with time, for example, if you test, uh, if you partner with crop nut, they will tell you, if Tanga Kika heavy, this is the diagnosis. You don't necessarily need to bring it for testing or something like that. So those are the benefits or the reasons why we do or have strategic alliances. And uh, next I'll discuss the steps. How do, we, how do we launch all this? For example, if there's someone who will begin to take the conversation with, with, uh, with CropNut, this will ideally be the stages that you, you go through. So number one is identify the need. The need could be, I talk to my customers, they want to start farming, nini nini, uh, but the first stage I know it is testing the soil. So I would want you to come on board to help us test the soil for these potential farmers, or even it could not be really potential. Even maybe someone has, has another piece of land somewhere else, they want to start farming there, then that's a good place to start. Uh, number two is evaluate partners. What are they bringing on board? Like, wh why do I want CropNut and not? I know there's another company that tests soil. What are they called? Uh, what are they called? I've forgotten. But why would you pick company A or soil that? cares? Soil care. SGR. SGR. Yes, SGR. SGR. I know you have SGR. So, yes. so why would I pick? Prop nut and not SGR, you know, why would I pick A over C or A over B? So you need to evaluate, like where do I get more benefit? Maybe crop nut has a bigger or a, a, a bigger market share. That will automatically mean they are able to bring their market share to your, to your business. Uh, number three is evaluate joint objectives and goals. How are we going to benefit? Why do we want to get into this partnership? You list all the, the reasons why you want this partnership to work. Then the next one is to define the roles and responsibilities. What do you do? What do we do? 
what does company A do? What does company B do? And from the activities or the roles for A and B, are they complementing each other? Because at the end of the day, you don't want to be competing for the same customers. So you need to clearly state, so that we deliver more value to our customer. The next one is a very good communication process. Because these agreements normally start from a basic conversation, you know, and you need to be able to, 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 to keep communication very clear and straightforward. In, even in terms of timelines, you say, let us get back to you next week on Monday, or let's talk in the afternoon. So it's something that you are able to, 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 like the communication needs to be very good from the word go, because these are partnerships. These are organizations, uh, two organizations are coming together, which means this partnership goes beyond purity or someone else, the person you are talking to. Maybe you are talking to Jackson in, at, at CropNut, and you, you are here representing Amiran. Then this partnership goes beyond the representative for Amiran and the representative for CropNut. Uh, the next one is develop conflict resolution systems. Like any other partnership, there's, you're going to, 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 to have conflict, you know, and I'm excited, one of the topics that we'll cover uh, sometime next week will be conflict management. How are we able to, to resolve conflict as soon as they come up? Then the next one is build on trust. You need to, to trust that they're going to give you referrals and they also need to trust you, you're going to give them referrals. Then the next one is demonstrate commitment. Like any other agreement, you have to, to show the commitment to the, to the cause. Then number second last one is be patient. And with partnerships or alliances, I think one key thing that normally misses is patience because you want us to come agree today and you want me to refer a hundred clients to you tomorrow. That's not practically possible. You know, you have to give it time. We have now this becomes a new product, a new, an existing market. Like we have to go back to our same customers and tell them, by the way, have you heard about Amiran? Or by the way, have you heard about CropNut? And that conversation does not lead to a hundred, not even a hundred percent. The turn around time is pretty, pretty low. You know, like you have to maybe experience results in a month's time or two months or three months, but that will be based on the efforts that you have put in today. Then the last step when it comes to creating strategic alliances is formalize with an agreement. Put it down on paper, you know, get some lawyers involved. Let them sign a contract like between Amiran and, and CropNut or Amiran and, and uh, the company Lillian was referring to when, when she gave her example. Like now this is a formal agreement such that we remove the elements of conflict of interest we also remove elements of liability. In case I sell your product and it backfires on, the, on that customer, that liability doesn't come back to me. So that is the whole process of creating strategic uh, alliances. Uh, I will want to end here and take any questions if there they are. I'll end with a quote. I, I know I started with a quote and I'll also end with two quotes. Uh, both by Cutters. Cutters is also a businessman, very famous uh, and a marketing guru as well. And what he says, you can never be too rich or too thin or have too many customers. Do we agree or disagree? Talk to me, please. Do we agree or disagree? Because I believe like even the rich also want to become richer, right? Edward. Yes, I agree. You agree with the statement? Yes. Will, will it ever reach to a point we say, Amiran, hey, tukwa na customer wengi sana, tuwezichukua wengine? No, we, we can never reach that point because we, we just like just like Safaricom, they keep on 
keep on getting customers there is uh-huh. there is no there is no limit that this is the ceiling no at is that to metosha kana ma customer ah ah i was ikani yes awesome uh husband do you want to read for me the next statement uh husband are you able to see the statement on your screen the 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 one on the quotes is from the same person yes from the same person partnering is the quickest is the quickest most effective way to reengineer a business i support you support 100% i also support the same so if if you want to reengineer a business if sales are becoming a problem for the sales team look for ways you can establish strategic alliances you know get to know who who can i partner with ata uko mashinani can i partner with the local chief you know can i partner with the local what is any agronomist see the government has like agronomist they send to to farms partner with those people if you want to make a turn around so uh, i'll wish to end there uh, this uh, evening uh any feedback uh not any feedback any questions so far on the three topics that we have discussed today oh uh, purity ojo oh, day yes please um okay thank you very much for the presentation on strategic alliances yes um uh much as we have got uh, a lot of success stories on strategic alliances in business mm-hmm. yes we also have got fair share of uh, you know a lot of failures in the same yeah true mm-hmm. and uh, i was wondering do you have another module or another training that you can share with us regarding uh, management of these strategic alliances um, like how to manage the strategic yes alliances? how to manage them to make sure that actually you get success out of them okay i had not prepared that for today but i i know that is something i'm able to easily prepare and share with you guys so because i i i know management of strategic alliances is a huge topic as well you know because you want after we sign the agreement what next you know what is your obligation like if we say you can refer clients how many clients did we say you can refer at any point So I think that's a very good point uh, you brought up Ojode on how then do we manage these strategic alliances. All right, thank you so much. Uh Edward, that's awesome. Thank you. Uh Hello. Edward, yes. I think maybe we do on what uh, you have said. Eh? Mm-hmm. Maybe you can also highlight some of the or rather give us the example some of the the failed strategic alliances so that also we get to know why did they fail so that also we don't get to that to such a point oh oh why strategic alliances fail yeah i think that's a very good point uh let me just uh take a note of that uh talked about uh, managing strategic alliances just hold on i want to make a note so that when i'm sending you the presentation it could have uh, maybe extra slides on management 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 and okay that's okay uh, any other concern or question from our today's uh, learning bencha is asking can i share the presentations yes i'll, I'll share the presentation and the recording as well so don't get worried that when, you want when will you share them normally we share as soon as possible i don't know if you, they normally reach you guys no, no okay not, not a single one okay not a single no problem. one i will combine for all the four sessions together and send them as one email so that you are able to receive all of it is that okay they are in the same same place we can what maybe you are sending in the same same place they, they, they might not reach us <laughs> most definitely we are sending to the same place they might not reach us 
idea alternatively i can use the email addresses that you normally log in with like for this session and send there that's much better cindy yeah right. because we need, we need to go back to them yes sometimes during the training we are on the road you are mm. not able to really concentrate mm -hmm. yeah. sometimes like myself i i my one of my phone uh went off uh -huh. before i could change the phone you have said something i didn't hear yes so, totally. yes sawa, sawa. no problem i think i'm able to to facilitate that that you get the notes are uh, latest today maybe in the evening if that's okay perfect awesome perfect. thank you so much for everyone make sure you give us feedback on today's session the link is on your screen uh on the chat box just have a click of it, a couple of questions, just to, to, to have a feel of what you, you experienced today in terms of learning and also what we can improve on moving forward. But thank you so much to everyone who was able to log in. Uh, have a very wonderful weekend, uh, very wonderful Friday. Uh, do not drink and drive, please, the people who are on the road. <laughs> and continue keeping safe. Uh, continue taking care of yourself, uh, washing your hands, wearing your mask, sanitizing and all that. Uh, until next week on Wednesday, uh, we're almost coming to the end of the program, which I'm very excited for and also sad at the same time. But make sure you, you join us on Wednesday at 2 p.m. Uh, as we discuss another topic. Then we'll close on Friday next week uh, after the sixth session. But it has been a pleasure having you uh, a lot of learning also on my end. So until next time, bye-bye and enjoy your evening. God bless you all. Bless you too. Amen.